Hey people, it's me again. So, anyways, um, although I probably didn't want to make like a second video, but I felt like that it probably should kind of come out a little bit more as far as on doing a video as far as on on my backup channel instead of uh, my regular channel because, as I kind of said before. With my bank channel that I have unlimited uh, time on that one until I probably get a strike or something, you know. So, anyways, as I was gonna mention, is that a lot of times I seem to have this go into bouts of like worrying over nothing, you know. And, Although, I never really said on here and on live journal how it came to be, you know, but uh, around the time when I was uh, born, my, my grandmother was really sick and then my mom was really nervous about, about it and then Likewise, she had to be in a way because grandma was really sick and I think she was dying of uh, lupus at the time, you know, and, and uh, mom was in the, grandma was in the hospital for, for most of that year when uh, I think my mom was pregnant with me and about the time when I was born. And then, when she was in, in the hospital, I think mom had to snuck me in, and then she did got to see me, you know, before before she passed. You know, and she passed away when I was about five months old, and and it's like to this day, I'm, and I'm still not quite over it because uh, I never got to know my grandmother, you know, and and uh, although I did us have like another my other grandfather uh on my dad's side passed away before uh any of my brothers and me were born i don't know if he ever really got to see um my two older cousins on that side of the family you know but he never got to see me or as well as my two brothers, or let alone got to see them grow up, you know, as well as me. And it was in the same way with Grandma, you know, that she never really got to see me grow up. And I think I kind of emulated Mom's uh, worry, worry and panicky behavior at the time when my Grandma was sick, so I was always being a little tense and worried over nothing on a lot of things even though I would try to like rationalize it out and sometimes but I just slip into these silly, silly little habits of worrying for nothing for for what apparent reason you know it seems to go that every time when I have such sort of drama of some sort I was like worrying out of my mind as far as when I was breaking up with uh, Eloy, the, the actor, you know, that I've talked about from time to time on my live journal and on here, you know, because it was the first time I've dealt with breaking up with somebody that I, that I thought I like, you know, and, and all of that sort of stuff, you know, and Although, I think, looking back at all of this, it was, it was hard breaking up with him because not only I was breaking up with him, I was breaking up with a bunch of other people, you know, all these friends that I had in, uh, in Texas. And then, it was, this was like the first time I actually made friends outside of home and outside of 
school and all that, you know, even though it was school there, but I never really had time to spend time with them, you know, although I probably would have spent time with them given the opportunity if they would have, would have, uh, called me, invited me over to any little events that they would have done, you know, I was happy to oblige to all of that, and I would have introduced them to mom and, and all of that, you know, but they never did. I mean, that was one of my other little problems that I had with those friends, you know, but I also had a little bit of other issues with them, as far as that goes, the way that they kind of the way they promoted the club at the time, you know, and and that they were treating it more like a group of friends rather than getting a lesbian club and allowing all these other people who were attending North Lake who were just questioning their own sexuality or orientation or, or uh, gender expression, for that matter, and allow them to kind of let them know, know, let these type of people know that they were not alone as far as questioning their sexual orientation or, or gender expression, you know, and find out who they really are and all. And, but, believe me, that was just one of those little things. So, anyways, although we did have like a couple people that would show up maybe just once or twice, you know, but although, there were some people that would just show up like quite regularly, you know, as far as that goes. But, but I think at that one club, we didn't really, I, we didn't really had like a, a resident fruit fly. Although, as far as in uh, JSA, we did have at least two uh, resident fruit flies. You know, if you know the whole term, you know, it, it just means. Uh, a straight person, whether whether male or female, that likes to hang around gay or lesbian people, as well as bisexuals, for that matter. And then, but it's kind of funny that I should probably say this as far as on as far as on the both clubs that I was in, you know, that all the guys that were there were all gay except for maybe just one per one or two people. But then all the girls that were in the club were by, except for just one or two people. And then there was just that one friend of mine that's straight. And then there was another friend who who was also a guy that came to the club that, that was also straight as well. And I didn't even know that until later on. And I just kind of mistook him being friendly with me as some way that he was trying to come on to me. And, which is kind of funny, you don't even get to think about it, you know. So, anyways, as I was um, saying that it was kind of hard for me to get over all of that because of not only losing one person, but also two people that I thought I liked, you know, in some ways. And then as well as some friends, people that I thought they were friends, you know, and, but, uh, although I was just, uh, reeling from all of that, you know, and there was all these other little issues that I had with them, you know, but, although, I guess I could say that, that as far as then, I think maybe the, just those little worries of, about that sort of stuff, you know, it also kind of go into a sense of me the becoming really self-conscientious about myself, and I think it had to do with my whole Asperger's as a whole, and me being in, like, special ed and all that, and and me having this sort of uh, discrimination for that. Whereas all these kids that were ostracizing me just because they were had this inability to understand that that 
then I just have AS and then I'm just need help being a little bit more social around that time, you know, but although I think it was until like around middle school when I started to make a little bit more friends, you know, and where I started to develop a little bit more social skills, you know, it was maybe around like even earlier, I guess, around fourth or fifth grade or so that maybe I was trying to get a little bit more social, but but not entirely having it to work there, but although I had to explain that as far as as far as with school goes that I was never been going to the same school as the kids in the neighborhood until middle school. And so that sort of thing might have also caused a little problems as far as developing socially in there. Instead of just allowing me to go to the same school as everybody else in the neighborhood, I would have been going to all these little events with them and sort of things like the whole spelling bees or swim meets or talent shows and that sort of thing, you know, that they usually do as far as for as far as uh, the school goes, as well as like ice cream socials, uh, the jogathons, you know. Although, I think you people might have seen the whole uh, bulletin board that is in my bedroom, that there's this one picture of me with my mom, and that, that was around third grade during the during like uh yeah it was during my jogathon and I think it was just before the jogathon and I think I was kind of like so happy that mom was there and yet at the time I think my mom was going to leave I think I was like crying you know but that mom was going to leave and then any of like the other friends you know had the same thing when they had all their parents coming to the the social events and they all get all emotional because they were going to leave but then even though they're only going to be gone for maybe just about a couple more hours, and then then we'll get to go home. And but still, <laughs> that's kind of funny sometimes, you know. But but you know how it is when when we're young, you know that that we're really like dependent on our parents, you know, especially when we're like about six, seven, or eight, you know. So, anyways, um. Although, I never really, like, showed you guys as far as what was, like, my most embarrassing memory, you know, but, although I have, like, a picture on it on my Facebook profile, you know, where it's just me dressing up as a California raisin, and here's, like, the whole story, you know, so, anyways, um, my mom and my dad were gone to go to, we're gone going to the New Orleans Jazz Fest, I think it was like 80, yeah, it was like 88, because this was first grade, I mean, so, one of my aunts was babysitting me, and the others, and uh, it was the day of the, the day of the little concert there, so my aunt borrowed my mom's uh, dress, and then took me to to the whole talent show or concert, you know, and then and then she also got to meet my my first grade teacher as well as kindergarten teacher, Miss Heitman, at the time. And then we performed the whole California racing skit of like Heard Through the Great Vine, you know, and I was all having this huge stage fright. And I'm so embarrassed that I think I was all, all blushing, you know. <laughs> and then, um, in some ways, we didn't actually wear the actual costumes. We wore, like, the trash bags all over our, over our regular clothes to make it look like we're raisins. So that's why we, 
when we were looking at these little trash bags, but then I was, I was not smiling in that picture, and so was like my friend, uh, Justin, <laughs> You're not smiling, you know, not to get to look back at all of it. It was, it was so funny, you know, that, that I have to dress up as a California raisin, you know, but, anyways, uh, as I was kind of saying in some cases, I never really saw Justin that much after first grade. He wasn't in my class in second grade. I think he was in a different school or had a different teacher. I don't really remember the whole story, you know, but then, but then, uh, I did kind of reunited with him briefly around during my junior year as far as my ski trip, you know, and I, and then when he said, like, uh, just where he told his, told his name, you know, and then I kind of said, like, oh, I remember you from first grade, you know. And he says, like, oh, you know, and so what's your name? You know, and I kind of told him my name and all that. Oh, and then he was also in my class as far as adult transition, you know, even though he wasn't with the teacher that there, but then he kind of would say hi to me from, from time to time, you know. And although I think it was like the first year or two there, I think I felt a little emotionally cramped and lost, I think, because here it was, uh, have, have my friend, uh, uh, Todd and, and Lisa there, as well as having all my old friends from, since, probably kindergarten, you know, some friends that I've known since, since first grade or kindergarten, and some friends that, that I've that I've known since uh, third grade or so, and I think I felt a little bit emotionally cramped because I think I was just trying to find my real identity there, you know, and I kind of felt a little bit lost there. And I think I just had this sort of emotional confusion and being lost like that for about that entire time, as well as the whole problems with the adult transition, you know, when they were going around telling me that no, I shouldn't take these sort of courses because it was too hard for me and blah, 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 you know, that sort of thing, you know, and all these other little stuff, you know, plus, I guess in some ways, I think... I was also trying to kind of come out, you know, but, although, I had mentioned it on my old channel as far as the whole, uh, family problems at that time, you know, that prevented me from coming out, but, although I don't really want to mention it right now, I think, but, although, even if that problems never occurred, I would still have this sort of great fear of being being ostracized and and rejected by everybody simply because I was just being true to myself as far as being gay, you know. And then the fact that there was might have been some people that would have get the whole orientation with my disability confused at some point saying something like Oh, he chooses to be gay because he has Asperger's and he can't relate to women or that sort of stuff, you know. When when those two things are completely separate. And, and I just hated it when people just try to insinuate that they were together, you know. I mean, what, it's so it's like they would assume that, that any other people with the Asperger's were part of the B that way. Even though there are some people that with the Asperger's are straight. Some people that are, have the Asperger's that are bi. Or transgendered or whatnot, you know, and the same with any other kind of disability of some sort that they would all have the different orientations or sex or, or gender expressions for that matter, you know. So it's just something that they should at least try to understand, you know. But I think it's to most people who are who are uh, heterosexual, c gendered neurotypical, non-disabled, 
that sort of thing. Anything out of that heron is completely foreign and completely out of their means to grasp something that is that is just completely different to them and that they have uh, some sort of fear of people who fall on the outside of those things as far as the neuro, neuro tip, neurotypes uh, enabled bodies, enabled mind minded people as well as heterosexual C gendered individuals, you know? And that everything that didn't seem to fall along that line of being being neurotypical enabled body or enabled mind C gendered heterosexual is completely invalid or irrelevant of understanding or worthy of of anything for that matter. I don't really seem to understand why people could could go off and dismiss people that aren't exactly like them and just uh, be so afraid of these sort of things because there's just these people like that exist and they're going to continue to exist no matter how much they would whine and complain about how these other people bother them simply because they exist and that's just what really encounters infuriates me with people that that have different everything what if it's just different sexual orientation gender expressions religion political affiliation eating preferences of that sort and and uh and whatnot, that all these sort of things that make us different will always exist there, as no matter how much they were complain. And it's just some things that that I just can't seem to fathom about that, you know. But although I try to accept these sort of things with people that are having difficulty understanding things that are out, out of the nature of under of comprehension and all that. Although I have to kind of uh, look a lot further about other these things about people that are in that nature of being capable of understanding such things like that, you know, instead of just uh, dismissing it and denying every little factual thing that there's people are going to be different from them as, as long as this world exists, you know. But, speaking of that, even though I hate having to digress into this sort of conversation about how, like, the world's gonna end and about a week or two from now, and then with like the whole day of judgment, and then having the whole world end and end in like October of some sort. I think of that as kind of a load of bull, to tell the truth, you know. And the same way with like the whole 2012 sort of thing. It seems like every year we would have these these alarmists going around and clamming around and saying that the world's going to end, you know, for what? For what are they trying to go around and cause some sort of panic for? Just for their own amusement or, or, or getting some sort of attention for themselves? I mean, come on, really. I don't think anything is going to really end as far as that goes. Here I was just going around, like, worrying about if that sort of thing was ever really true, then I was never going to enjoy being in my 30s as far as that goes, because I'm going to be turning 30 next month. And I was just worried about, for no apparent reason, that 
that the 30s were that being in my 30s is just gonna be bad or something you know but then as far as everybody that told me is any of like my parents or any of like my uh live journal friends or youtube friends that talked to me on blog tv a couple of times that they said that being 30 wasn't really that bad because it's for one matter is there's no midlife crisis and all that sort of stuff but although I think there are some people that go in their 30s go into this sort of third life crisis you know which is almost like similar to having a quarter life crisis or a midlife crisis in a way but in your 30s I think that's what it is with like the whole third life crisis is because there is just some people who probably have this sort of crazy beliefs uh, saying that they wasted their whole 20s uh, having fun and not making their needs for themselves and worry that they kind of run out of opportunities in life and blah 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 you know that sort of thing you know and and then here I am I I almost succumb to that kind of feeling that maybe I'm not going to amount to that much because I wasted all my 20s as far as getting people off my back and trying to find myself and not having enough emotional space to figure out who I am, what it is I want, and all these other little things, you know, and, and when I could have just been doing that kind of stuff in my teens, you know, but... I think I've yet to kind of pretty much uh, accept the fact that that I have plenty of time to figure out what it is I want to do with my life as far as everything, whether if it's just love, jobs, hope for like the future and all that sort of stuff. So, anyways, I think my phone had fallen out, fallen off because I had like an an email. So, anyways, I guess that's probably it. So, even though I was gonna probably end the whole video before the phone fell off. So, anyways, I'll just talk to you guys later. So, anyways, see ya.